what is up my chemistry people it is mr boylan here for one more video of fun today what in the heck are we going to do in this video we are going to compare fusion and fission reactions let's get nuclear nuclear as always breaking it down for you or should i say decaying it down for you. We're going to identify fission and fusion reactions. And numero dos, we're going to differentiate between nuclear decay reactions, which hopefully we learned about earlier, nuclear fission reactions and nuclear fusion reactions. Basically, when the nuclei of certain isotopes are bombarded with neutrons, the nuclei split into smaller fragments, and that process is called fission. So check out this animation. Notice that what happens is a neutron comes flying in, causing the fission of this uranium-235 atom, or nucleus. It splits into smaller fragments. This process is known as fission. Couple things about fission reactions additional neutrons are released and cause the fission of other atoms. So as you watch this animation again and again, you see these little blue neutrons going flying away that could then fission other atoms. Keep in mind then that a chain reaction occurs when some of those emitted neutrons react with other fissionable atoms and emit neutrons that react with even more fissionable atoms. We start a chain reaction. Recognize that nuclear fission releases enormous amounts of energy. I mean, we're talking about nuclear weapons and nuclear power plants. This process, huge amounts of energy are released. You take a look at your screen and in your notes, you're given an example of a fission reaction Again, what you're looking for to help you identify this as a fission reaction and not as one of the other decay reactions we talked about earlier, notice we've got a nuclide plus a neutron. Pew, that neutron comes flying in. In the process, on the product side, we form two smaller nuclei, two smaller fragments, and often more neutrons, in this case, three. All right, I've posted a link to this thrilling animation on the website. I encourage you to check it out on a Friday night if you're looking for something to do. I've got this amazing neutron gun and I'm gonna shoot a neutron at an atom of uranium-235. I'm gonna fission this sucker. Boo! Watch it, boo! Fission out. Let's try that one more time. Shoot in a neutron, watch it, Fission, boom! Notice we split it out into some smaller nucleides and additional neutrons. So now I want you to think about what's happening in a chain reaction. I'm gonna shoot just a single neutron at this atom of uranium-235. Once it fissions, it's gonna release additional neutrons. Those neutrons are gonna fire out and hit other, well, I'll let you watch it, neutron. Fission, boom, 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 chain reaction, woo! Now, essentially, a controlled chain reaction is what we use in nuclear power plants. I'm gonna fire some neutrons here, and I can adjust, essentially, how those neutrons interact with others if I want to increase the power or decrease the power. Boom, science. <laughs> Now there's a second type of nuclear reaction we want to be comfortable with, and that is called a fusion reaction. Here, instead of splitting a large nucleus, we're combining smaller ones to make a larger one, fusing them together. If you take a look at this animation, we've got two atoms or nucleides of deuterium, which is hydrogen that has a mass of two. As we slam those things together, we create a larger atom of helium-3. Fusion. Now, some things to think about with fusion reactions. You're gonna release huge amounts of energy. Now, fission reactions release a lot of energy, but fusion reactions release huger, did I just become Trump? 
huger. Release much more energy than fission reactions. Fusion would be essentially the holy grail of our energy needs. We could figure out a way to harness a fusion reaction. We could power our lives in a very clean way. Now, fusion only occurs at very high temperatures. Part of the reason why it's so difficult to successfully contain a fusion reaction is you need really high temperatures. In fact, you have to use a fission reaction in order to get a fusion reaction to even get started. So, we do know that fusion reactions occur in stars, our sun included, and the hydrogen bomb. So we have been able to recreate a fusion reaction, just not a controlled fusion. If you take a look at the example on your screen and in your notes, here we're given an example of a fusion reaction. Again, I want you to sort of note and think about how this compares to a fission reaction and to some of our nuclear decay reactions. Notice that we're starting with two fairly small nuclei and they come together to form something that has a larger mass. We fuse them together. All right, that about does it. Short and sweet. Have a fantastic day.